You may have lost a lot of physical because you want to You have been lost everything. When the battle chooses you, God fights for you. He's with you and he will show himself mighty. People may strip you of what you have, but so long as they have not stripped you of your life, there is still hope for you. Hello, good evening, family. Good evening, world. Welcome to another episode of Tuesdays with the Ambassador of Hope. Episode number 53. What a blessing, what an honor. And listen, every day above the ground is a good day. So long as there's breath in your nostrils and a habit in your chest, there's still hope for you. Listen, there must be no situation or circumstance that should ever cause you to give up. Let me tell you something. If you give up, what is the alternative? You never know what tomorrow holds. You never know what the next one hour holds. Be resilient. Hold on. Because there's hope in your future. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to come your way. You know, we started a brand new series, The Mentor and the Protege. It's going to, be get, it's going to just be amazing. It's going to, you are going to learn so many things. And like I told you in the beginning, there's no rush with this thing. I'm not in a hurry, and hopefully you are not in a hurry. Listen, we're going to take it step by step, step by step, step by step. And like I told you every week, we'll bring one of our prodigies here. And today is my pleasure to welcome one of my prodigies. In a few minutes, I'm going to bring him up, and it's going to be a blessing. So listen, please pick up your tablets. Can you do me a favor? Can you share to 10 people? Can you share to 20 people? Please do that. Live. Tell the people that we are live on Facebook, the Ambassador of Hope. And we are live on YouTube. Please, let's do that right now. Let's do that right now. Let's do that. F Facebook, let's do that. Whilst I welcome a few people, we're going to do that very quickly and get out of your way. Good evening, Honorable Nanani Mo. You are first on the line. God bless you. All the way from the United Kingdom, Julia. Julia Kutuka, God bless. Julia, I hope you're doing very well. Blessings upon you from Kerry, South Ghana. Shepherd, Kuzib Wadum. Shepherd, God bless you. Abigail Toku Keris House, Accra, Ghana. Mildred, Porsche, Akili. Mildred, how are you doing? I trust you're doing good. From the Republic of Tennessee, Rose Queen and Krumah, God bless you, real good. Julia, giving him all the glory. Please share, share to some people. Make sure that you share to some 10 people before right, we, we go right ahead. And whilst I'm talking about that, I want to just make a reminder. You know, the big one is coming your way. The big one is coming your this July. Every road leads to Kerry's house in Atlanta, Georgia, right on your screen, is the advert for the greatest leadership meeting that you are ever going to be in. Listen, the greatest investment you can ever make is to invest in yourself. Take some time, take some money, take some, some time off and make yourself better because I realize that in this life, when you get better, things around you get better. Never forget that. July 20th to the 24th, right here, 
7, 8, 1 10 Highway, Loganville, Georgia. There will be morning sessions. There will be afternoon sessions, evening sessions. You cannot afford to miss it. Great speakers are coming your way. Zenzo Matoga, Mensah Tabel, Samchan, Francis Maltz, and of course, your host, Frank Ofosuapia. It is going to be amazing. Listen, go to advancedlight.org. Go to advancedlight.org and register. Pastors, leaders, business people, listen. Register yourself. Register your members. On Saturday morning, Zenzo Matoga is having Youth on Fire. It is going to be just amazing. This is one of the authorities in with youth in all the world, and I can vouch for that. He's something else on another planet. You don't want to miss that. Bring your youth, invest in them. Some of them get bored and they get into trouble. So please, come right in here. Hey, Minister Eric Obin, God bless you for being here. Felicia McAdi, God bless you. Adelaide Tachimensa from Delaware, God bless you. Dale from the Republic of North Cross, Georgia, God richly bless you. Patricia and Kruma, God bless you. Hey, who is here? Presidents, Presidents, God richly bless you. Nana, Abba, Jabab, Sila, God richly bless you so, so much. Please, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. Collins is telling everybody, share, share, share. Good evening, Tracy. Good evening, Tracy Ann. Oh, you are all here. God richly bless you so much. Gloria say, My one and only Honorable Abdum Ej Echampo. God bless you. Miripa Natasha. God bless you. Nanefia. Hi, Nanefia. Blessings. L. Mark Mills from Nebraska. Omaha, Nebraska. God bless you. Clifford from New Jersey. All Nations Church. God bless you. Esther or Paul. My birthday girl, God bless you, really good. Gabriella, God is still at work. God is still at work. You know, he works on the left side. You cannot see it on the right hand. You cannot know, but he knows the way that you take. In God's blessing, ISI. Yes, it's going to be awesome. We're all waiting for you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Ransford, Ransford, thank you for sharing. Listen, guys, take your phone and share. Ten people, let's do that. Let's do that. Pastor Joasma is there. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, really good. Yvonne Hotter. Yes, telling everybody it's ISI 2022, ordered leadership. You've got to be an ordered leader in order to bring order out of your chaos. So please, let's get rolling in a few minutes. We're going episode number 53. Can you imagine 53 already? It's just going to be late. It's just going to be amazing. Our family and friends on, on YouTube, so many of you here, Daniel Peso, bless up. Come on, guys, share, share, share. Mami Akwa, all the way from Docklands in the United Kingdom. You are all here. Please share, share. Love you all, our family. Love you all, our family. Let's do it. Katachie George from Delaware. Adam, yes, Adam Agbeti from Keris House, Ghana. God richly bless you. Charles Spencer. Charles Saxman, soldier, how are you doing? I've missed you, you know. Find some time and come see us. Let's do that. Victoria Ofosuama, good evening to you from to, to you in London. I know you are you are awake just to be with us. We don't take you. For granted at all, Jenny Yan, God richly bless you. Justice, Budu Smith, God richly bless you. Joe Bandi, Joe Bandi, God bless you. Ajoa Claudia, blessings. Nana, gonna do beautiful all the way from Toronto, Canada. God richly bless you, mommy. Millicent, mommy, God richly bless you. Mabna, Francisca, blessings upon you. Yes, Jennifer, Kensa, Campbell, God richly bless you. Mula again, wow. Denzel, all the way from Missouri. God richly bless you. Collins, you are watching us from Ghana. Blessings upon your head. Now listen, this is the last one and we get rolling. Can you just take your tablets? Let's do some, some five more people. Please share to some five more people. Wake them up, knock on their door. Cleopatra, Nafali, hello to you. Divine Rentals, she does amazing. Reverend David Joe from Re the Republic of Virginia, Alexandra, Virginia. God richly bless you from the city of London, KB Bosman. So good to have all of you. Thank you so much. Listen, we've started an exciting series, The Mentor and the Prodigy. And we have established by saying that it is a fact, hear me, friend, that everybody needs somebody to get somewhere. My dad taught me a little thing, you know, that when you see a tortoise sitting on a fence post, you know that it didn't get there by itself. Somebody put that person there. It's very, very, very important. That is where mentoring comes into the equation. You have to understand that the difference, many times the difference between two people is not a lucky break. The difference between two people is not their background necessarily. The difference between two people may not just be the agenda or the education. It is the information they have. And not just any information, but good information. Do you realize that every good new information that you get takes you into new seasons? Every season that you've got to every level in life demands some 
information in your life. Because what you don't know is what is hurting you. And what I realize in this life, that that is what informs and drives these series that we are doing, is that mentors, they have information, they have resources that you need to, to move you to those new seasons in your life. You need mentors to help transition you from one season to the other season. When you were a baby and you were crawling and you were learning to walk, somebody had to help you. Somebody had to show you that, listen, even if you fall, get up again until you get your balance and you're able to run. Mentors are your bridge between where you are right now and where you want to go. I want to put it on the screen for you. I say mentors are your bridge between where you are right now and where you want to go. Unfortunately, friends, today, because of some past unpleasant experiences, when some mentors became tormentors, some hurt, some disappointment, some, some things happened, and people who need mentoring are running away from mentoring. I'm sure you've heard the aphorism that you don't throw away the baby with the dirty bath water. The fact that you've been hurt, the fact that you've been offended, the fact that you've been shortchanged does not make a good thing bad. Hear me. Don't allow, I'm going to say it slowly for you to understand this. Don't permit your painful, unpleasant past experiences to inform your pursuit of good things. There's not one of you listening to me today who's, who has not been burnt before. There's no one of you today who can who can who cannot who can say that I've never been hurt. We, we all offend people. People offend us. It's part of life. We rub against each other. We we are immature sometimes. We we do things. We say things, and people do things to us. But that should not inform you to stay away from what is good. Hear me. I told you last week that I am the I am a result of some serious mentoring, and I'm still being mentored and coached. I didn't, I didn't rush to post all my education, my processing, and my experiences online. But behind the scenes, people helped me. And I consider my mentoring process very sacred and very sacrosanct. Who is your mentor? Who are your mentors? In the last episode, we learned that mentoring is as old as civilization itself. Mentoring is old. It is found in almost every culture. It is found in every religion. It is found in every trade and career. People who have been there, you know, you shadow people, you watch people, you look at people, you know, and they help you. In the Bible, both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, we see mentoring. Moses, a man that, that ate with God, a man that went into the presence of God and came down with glory on his face, a man who single-handedly with the help of God took down the greatest empire, Egypt, and set millions of people free to go into their promise. But at a point, he needed a mentor. He was burning himself out, trying to listen to everybody's problem, trying to do everything. And his father-in-law, Jethro, came in, and he became his mentor. He taught him the art of delegation. He taught him the art of effective systems. And because of that, Moses was saved from being burnt out. You read the Bible one time, Moses went to the Lord and said, I'm tired. If you really love me, kill me and put me out of this misery. And sometimes, listen, you need somebody to be there for you because whatever God has not given to you, he has given to somebody. What God hasn't placed on the inside of you, he placed it in somebody. Moses saw that and so he also took Joshua and mentored Joshua and showed him so many things, so much that when Moses stopped, Joshua took the baton and took the people into the promised land proper. Or we think about the classic case of Elijah and Elisha. Elisha followed Elijah for about 20 years. He watched him. He helped. At the end, no doubt, he got twice what his master did. Coming to the Old Testament, possibly the greatest example for Jesus that Christianity ever produced was a man from Tarsus, a man called Saul, who became Paul the Apostle. He was great. He, he had an encounter on the road to Damascus. Jesus taught him. Jesus showed him some things in the wilderness of Arabia. But because of his background, because of his resume, the church were wary of him. The church didn't want, to want him. Barnabas took Paul and he mentored him and put his own reputation on the line and took him to the early apostles for acceptance. Somebody has what you don't have. A mentor knows where you can go. Somebody has a resource that you desperately need. 
Paul had a young protege called Timothy. And we shall be dealing with that when I deal with how to work with a leader. It is very, very, very important. So who is a mentor? Who is a mentor? Let me put it out there on your screen for you very quickly. Who is your mentor? I established last week and I want to establish again that a mentor is somebody who imparts his or her personal strength. They impart their personal strength, their resources, their experiences, their wisdom, their connections to help a younger one, a protege, a mentee to reach their full potential. Somebody has what you don't need. Somebody knows what you don't know. Somebody knows some people that you might need. You know, I have some very important people in my life. One of them is, is out there. We'll put it out on the screen, Dr. Samchan. You know, there are one, there's one thing about Dr. Samchan. Anytime I need something, I need a correction. say, Pastor Frank, just wait. And in, a, in, in just like a moment, I get an email or a phone call. Pastor Frank, I've got so-and-so on the line. Talk, I'm done, bye. And the connection is made. That is what mentoring does. So somebody who has resources, somebody who has strength, somebody who has wisdom, somebody who has workplaces you haven't worked before, somebody who has connections that you might need one day, they put it at your disposal so that they shorten your learning curve. One of the questions that were asked last week when I had one of my, you know, protégés, Pastor Brian here, God bless you, Pastor Brian, uh, was the fact that are there differences between fathers and mentors? Yes. First Corinthians chapter 4. four verse 14 and 15 from the New Living Translation. The Apostle Paul made a distinction. He said, I'm not writing these things to shame you, but I'm wanting to admonish you, to warn you as my beloved children. And he goes on to say that, even if you had 10,000 others to teach you about Christ, mentors, you can have several mentors. You have only one spiritual father. So for those of you who have multiple fathers with multiple signboards, this goes to you. He says that you have only one spiritual father, but you can have multiple counselors. For I became your father in Christ Jesus when I preached the good news to you. I'm not going to believe at this point, but listen, in order to fulfill your destiny, you need both of these people. You need fathers, and then you need instructors or mentors or coaches or whatever you call them. It is very important. A father, a spiritual father in your life, he watches over your soul. It's very important to be your pastor, whatever. Watches over your soul, anchors you to your destiny. But mentors, they teach you. Mentors, they instruct you. Mentors resource you. They can carry you to places where you could not easily go by yourself. Please hear me and hear me very well. David was giving birth to by Jesse. Jesse was his biological father. But for David to become everything that he had to do, be, he had to be sent to a spiritual father called Samuel. And then they also sent him into the house of Saul to be mentored in stagecraft. If you look into your life, you are going to find out that there are many people whose influences form the tapestry of your life. Many times I hear people say, I'm a self-made man, I'm a self-made woman. And I kind of chuckle and I say, I agree with you. The only problem with you is that you tend to worship your maker. Self-made people, you worship yourself. But listen, in this episode, we are pressing on and again, I told you in the last episode, and I warn you again, it's not a crash course. This is not a crash course. Somebody must take their time to bring understanding to you. I know that this generation, we are hasty. We want three steps to boom, 14 steps to stupid. But no, no, no. I, I, am, I am different. I came to help you. If for every day, I just... So please, 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 we are going to be disciplined. We are going to be consistent. We are going to be patient. And then we are going to learn together. And so we are today, my burden is we are going to look at some of the dynamics of mentoring. Because when it comes to the issue of a mentor and a protege, please listen to me carefully. It is not a one-way street. It is not a one-way street. No relationship is just one way. A lot of times our relationships and things don't work out because people just sit back and expect the thing to work. The law of atrophy says that anything left by itself will eventually deteriorate. You need to do your part and somebody else need to do their part. So people, when we don't get this thing right, then there's disappointment and pain. I don't know if I told you the other day that I've been to a lot of places. I go Even right here, all like there are people that send me a message. Oh, Papa, God showed me that you, you should be my mentor. And if 100 people tell me that, 
I tell 101 people yes, and I sit back and I watch them. I intentionally, oh, I don't know why I'm even telling you this. I intentionally resist them. I make like I'm ignoring you just to see. Do you remember one time after Jesus was risen from the dead? I think it's in Luke 24 or something. And two of his disciples were walking on the road to Emmaus. And suddenly a stranger joins himself to them. And then they begin to talk. That was Jesus. You know the story when he asked them, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? Don't you know blah, 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 and open their eyes. And the Bible says that Jesus pretended that the man pretended was on his way, but the people constrained him to stay that night with them. Sometimes mentors will intentionally resist you to find out whether you are really serious. Because there are many people who get fascinated, and I'll be talking about that, with gifts and things. And so when they don't grab it immediately, they can't go through the test. Listen, there has to be a test. Before, before there's an impartation, there must be an association. Where there's an association, there must be a test. Life is not just cut and dry like that. Being great is a process. So I want us to look at some of the characteristics that mentors must possess. If you're a mentor, what are some of the characteristics? And after that, I'll look at the protege. Then I'm going to bring one of my proteges, Reverend Joseph Asma. He's going to be on the line. I don't know if we can show him and let him just wave to us very quickly all the way from, yes, good to see you, Reverend Asma, all the way from New Jersey, Elizabeth, New Jersey. I'm so excited to have you, Pastor Asma. God richly bless you. You know, Paul the Apostle said that anytime I think about you, I give God the glory. Thank you for your life. But listen, let me, let me give you a warning here. Sometimes people don't understand who a mentor is. And let me give you some six quick things that mentors are not. Then I'll, I'll give you some quick things about what mentors are. Number one, a mentor is not a solution to all your problems. A mentor is not a solution to all your problems. Because there are people who think that once you are my mentor, you must pay my bills, you must think for me, you must clean my teeth, you must cut my in ingrown toenail. There are coaches that think like that. And they end up with a lot of disappointment. Your mentor is not God. There's a God in heaven. His name is not called your mentor. Never forget that. Number two, your mentor is not your boss for life. Because I believe that at a point, mentoring relationships change. Jesus said, I don't call you servants any longer. I call you friends. You must mature to a place where you also begin to mentor other people. Number two, mentors, they will not carry you and your problems for your whole life. Your mentors are not going to carry you and your problems for life. Never forget that. There are people who are angry. Oh, he used to help me. He doesn't help me anymore. After I, I help you to walk, what do you need again, a cane? I told you. And number four, please know this. Mentors are not stupid. <laughs> Don't go to take advantage of them. Because if you knew what they knew, you would not be going to them. And I've seen a lot of people just go take advantage. And the fact that the mentor didn't say anything, and I'll be teaching you some things when I come to the principle of pursuit. They'll pretend they don't know anything. But when they don't say anything, you are in danger. Then lastly, their gifts, their status, their notoriety doesn't make them perfect. A gift doesn't say anything about anybody. It says everything about the one who gave the gift. Stop worshipping gifts. So let's put the burden as a mentor. What are some of the things that a mentor must be? Number one, if you're going to be a mentor, you must be a role model. A mentor is a role model. You must be a role model. And I believe that there are two great characteristics that they must, they must, they must model if you're a mentor. And if you're looking for a mentor, look for those things. Character and integrity. Character and integrity. Many times when we talk about character people because they don't chase men, they don't chase women, they don't smoke, they don't clap, they don't, but sometimes it's even can they hold confidences? How do they handle people? Do they Are they respectful of people? Do they listen to people? Or their gift is gift of throwing shades. These are very, very, very important. And I want to address a mentor today. Some of you listening to me today, you are mentoring young men and young women. Please be careful what you are showing your protégés. Because when people come around you, many times they are attracted by your gift and what you have. Please 
Let them see the Jesus on the inside of you. Let them see some integrity. Let them understand that leadership is not to take advantage of human beings. Number two, a mentor must be willing to invest themselves in the relationship. A mentor must be willing. That is why when you are looking for a mentor, you must make sure that the mentor will have time for you. We'll look at that at another time. Because every mentoring situation involves some characteristics. It is going to involve time. It's going to involve energy. It's going to involve commitment. It's going to involve money. It's going to involve a whole lot of things. So there must be an intentionality. Is the mentor, is the mentor you are looking for, that he or she have the time, the intentionality, the willingness to invest themselves in a protege. Mentor, if you cannot have the time, upfront, let them know. That is why it's very important for you to come to an understanding. There are people I ask them, what are your expectations of me? Because many times assumptions come in. And when assumptions and reality meet, that is where conflict happens. So it's important that you know that. Number three, every mentor, and this is a big one, I could talk forever on this, must be transparent with their personal challenges. No, I'm not saying that in, in, in willy-nilly, right there, you begin to talk about all these things. But I, being a mentor to hundreds and hundreds and possibly thousands of people, I realize that sometimes people assume that mentors, people like us, we don't have any challenges. Angels of God wake us up in the morning and go and brush our teeth for us. Angels, you know, they, they, they cook breakfast for us, you know, they, they dress us up, you know. So, somebody was telling me the other day that they thought, in fact, people came to dress me up to take me to church every day. After Sunday, I just go and relax on a boat somewhere in Corsica or Mallorca or something. No, I am a human being before a human doing. Never forget that. And so people understand that mentors, mentors, please let the people who follow you know that you are human. We have this treasure in jars of clay. We have this pizza in boxes that we throw away. We have this coffee in styrofoam cups. That is what Paul was saying. When we buy Starbucks coffee, we are not buying the cup. We are buying the coffee, but there will be no coffee without the cup. And the gift is in earthen vessels. We are, we are jars of clay. Never forget that. And sometimes mentors, hear me, they have painful stories. They have scars that they may not show you beginning. Do you know that the greatest man who ever walked this side of heaven called Jesus Christ, Yeshua Mahashia, the, the carpenter from Galilee, after he was scarred, after he was beaten, after he was, I mean, things were done. When he rose up, he was man enough to show his scars to his protégés. Don't cover it. I know, let me balance this. I know this can be a challenge, especially in cultures, and I come from one, where there's a lot of hero worshiping. We worship our heroes. We, as we put them on pedestals. We, we, when they make mistakes, we even go to war on them. We set up Facebook pages to fight for foolishness. Please listen to me. And never forget this. Mentors are not God. They are human. Some of us have feet of clay. We make mistakes. And so as a mentor over time, with wisdom, you must let your protege know some of the things and the challenges that you have faced. You look at Paul, there are some intimate people in his life that he used to talk about them. I think about one of them, you know, his name is mentioned, I think, only twice in the New Testament. Almost limbless. We don't know who he is. We don't know the exploit. The Bible doesn't talk about how much tongues he spoke or the dead that he rose. He, 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 I beg your pardon. The dead that he raised. And yet Paul commended this man highly and his family. To the extent that he blessed him that may the Lord remember this man on that great day of judgment. That man's name is Onesephorus. Onesephorus means light bringer. And you can find his thing in 1 Timothy chapter 1. And also in 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 19. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 15 and 16. Look at it. I beg your pardon. I think 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 15 and 16. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Let's, let's go. It's so important to me. Let's do that. Let's do that. But welcome again. Welcome again. Mark Pesima. Thank you. Hey. Yar, Yar Bafo from London. God bless you. Kamran Jeff from Ghana. God bless you. Mami Sewa. Yes. You better stay there and watch. Joyce Mensa. God bless you. Ethel Afrani. God bless you. Abna Beko. What a blessing. Sibu. Sibu. We, we're looking out for you at ISI Victoria Court from Cincinnati, Ohio, God bless you all the way from Brampton, um, 
Ontario, Canada, Susan Hesia Connor, Jennifer Tieku from uh, North Carolina. God richly bless you. Valerie Oden, good to have you here today. God richly bless you. Listen, I said to you, this is what he says that I want you to know that all those in Asia have turned away from me, among whom are phygelous and homogenous. Now listen, he says, The Lord grant mercy to the household of Onesephorus, for he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chain. This man was not ashamed of my chain. Paul was in chains. He had been humiliated. He's in the Mimetin prison. He's going through a whole lot of things. And Paul is commending that guy that he was not ashamed. Listen, you have to make sure that you are not ashamed of the chains of your mentor. Because there are people that the moment they say, oh, my mentor has cars, my mentor, then they back off. What did you go to learn? Perfection? No. I remember one of my greatest mentors, I think I talked to you about him last week. He told me one day, he looked at me and said, Frank, you may be lying to your people and not even realize it. I mean, I was shocked. My jaws dropped like me. No, no, I can't lie like that. And I said, please explain. And he said, if you only let your people, the people that follow you, the people that look up to you, if you only let them see your triumphs without letting them see your trials, then you are shortchanging them. You're not letting them live the truth. So when you're a mentor, show your scars. Be wise, but show it. Number four, a mentor must be available. You must be accessible. You must be approachable. If you're going to be a mentor and there's a mentoring protege relationship, like I told you, there's a cost. Make yourself available to your proteges. One of the things that I get a lot is people who say, oh, he's my father, she's my mother, he's my this, and I call him, they never, they never pick up. The... Now, you don't go to take advantage of it because they are tremendously busy. I am a very busy person. In fact, I need 25 hours every day just to catch up. So sometimes it's tight. Just as you are looking for my times, about 200 people are looking for my time at the same time. But a mentor, we try to make ourselves available. Very, very important. And ask if you are protege, you should be mindful of that. Number five, if you're a mentor, you should be a good listener. Good listener. Let me tell you something. Listening is an art. <laughs> listening is an art. You have to train yourself to listen and even to listen to what people are not saying. Because many times the truth that people are telling you, they are not saying it. Whatever they are saying, there's a voice behind the voice. You have to learn. So you listen three ways. You listen attentively. When I'm listening to you, cut off everything. Put the phone down. Put it on silent. The world will not end. Listen attentively. Listen understandably. Yeah, okay, I get you. Oh, so this is it. Try to understand what the person is saying. Then you listen intentionally. You listen intentionally. So there are people when they are speaking, just listen, don't interrupt. Number six. Right ahead, and we're going to turn it around. If you're a mentor, hold the protege accountable. One of the things that people don't do well is accountability. Like supervision, like inspection. People don't realize that it's a very necessary component. Who holds you accountable? Who are you accountable to? Today, there are a lot of free-spirited people. When you are making mistakes, who can call you? Whose number do you see on your caller ID that makes you shake? Whose number do you see on your caller ID that you know, uh oh, here is trouble? Who says stop? And without even asking why, you stop and you talk later. If you don't have one in your life, you are on thin ice. You must be held accountable. Because I've learned over the years that loose cannons are very dangerous, not to others, but especially to themselves. The last one, every mentor must learn to celebrate the progress of the protege. Mentors, celebrate the progress of your mentor. Uh, listen, some of us grew up in cultures that no matter whatever you did, it was never enough. But it's a new day. What you speak to in the life of somebody encourages them to be better. So see the potential in them. See the potential in your protege. And listen, have tolerance for the mistakes, the failings, and the shortcomings of your protege. That is why you are a mentor. You are helping them. Be flexible when you are responding to their unique situations and have a good perspective of where your protege is going. 
See beyond there now. I hope it's helping you. Listen, let me see here. Now I'm going to talk to you very quickly in about five minutes and I'm going to bring Pastor Asma on. My protege is going to come on. But Colin Sakwa, God bless you. Joyce Mensah, it's good to have you online here. Oh, wow. Kabna Jeff, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Who have I got here? Yvonne Hotel, God bless you. Offense to my missions. You are watching from Woodbridge, Virginia. God bless you. May the Lord bless Offense to my. Iso, Isobel, God richly bless you, my daughter. All the way from Accra, Keris House, Osofu Manijapo. Nanefia, God bless you. Minister Felicia McAdi, God richly bless you. Blessings, 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 blessings. So, well, I've got all of you here. Wow. Nana Morrison, cheers to God. God bless you. I hope you all are learning something. Now, let's go right ahead. So, listen, you are a protege. You are a protege. What are some of the things that you must be and you must look for? Number one, you must desire. You must have a desire to develop your full potential. Where you are is not all there is to be. What you have is not all there is to have. Somebody must help you. But there must be that desire. Listen, I tell people that the fruit, of, the proof of desire is pursuit. So that is why I tell you that I go to places, people get fascinated with my gifts, whatever God has given to me. Oh, Papa, you are my mentor. And I sit back and I watch them. And they expect me to chase them. I'm not going to do that. I have what you need. Listen, I don't think the grocery store knocks on your door every morning. Please, what do you need? We want to come and supply it to you? No. When you desire something, that is why my children growing up, sometimes come here, I don't want to eat. And I tell my wife, when they are hungry, they will eat. There are some things nobody has to force you. Listen, your, desire, your, your, your pursuit must be driven by a clean desire for somebody to help you to develop into the best version of yourself. That is why, listen, when you go around mentors, I am begging you. I told you I'll be direct. Last week I told you something. That the truth, not everything true is pretty. And not everything pretty is true. I'll tell you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I really want to help you. Listen, when you, when you are looking for mentoring situations and things, watch your heart. Hidden agendas. Am I going to use the person? Am I going to use their name? Am I going to just do this and drop them? When a better one comes or whatever, I'm going to just forget about them, obliterate them, clean them out, cancel them in our cancel culture? No! Pursue the person. Let something good come out of it until you become better than the person. It's very, very important. Remember Jesus said that, listen, the works that I do, you will also do and greater works than this. You know what he's saying? Whatever I came to accomplish here, do better. I'm not talking about the crucifixion, which was you and I can, you, we can't even donate blood for two people to be saved. But what I'm saying is that he says right here on earth, the works that I've done, go do it. So you must have that desire and that desire must push you. Number two, you must passionately pursue your mentor. Don't sit down for the mentor to pursue you. I've had situations many times that I had to call people and ask them, are you alive? Are you here? And sometimes some of the most painful things people tell me, protégés, oh, Papa, you know, I'm not very good at phone calls. Really? What are you good at? If you're not good at phone calls, you're not good at returning calls. What exactly are you good at? One time I had to look at a young guy and I'll say, I, I, I wanted to talk to him. I've helped him. He said, oh, Papa, you know, I'm busy. And I say, you are busy. You. You. Pastoring three lizards and four cockroaches. You are, you are busy. And I said, do you know my life? Last Sunday, I did a, 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 like a two-minute mentoring with a young guy who asked me a question about how I have been able to balance my life. And I said, listen, they gave us 24 hours a day. They tell us you use eight hours to work, eight hours to sleep, which I don't do. I'll sleep later when I die. But the third eight hours is where success or failure lies. What do you do with that? You must be able to make time. So please listen to me. Your mentor, the one that is in a mental situation with you, has something that you desire. You need that thing. And the proof of your desire must be how you pursue that person. Don't sit back and expect your mentor to initiate pursuit. Because what you don't have to forget is this. Others may also be pursuing the same person you are trying to pursue. So don't sit down and, ah, he must call me. No, he we won't call you. Number three, you must respect and honor your mentor. You must respect and honor your mentor. It is a fact, it's a fact, friend that you will not be able to properly receive from somebody you don't hold in esteem. 
So let me say this as I finish. Never dishonor your mentor. Because when you do that, it repels him or her from you. I have learned over the years that respect and honor, they are like magnets. It will draw you to the object of who you respect. When you respect your mentor, when you honor them, respect will take you to places that few people are giving access to. Respect them with your words, in their presence and especially in their absence. Respect them with your actions. Respect them, honor them with your attitude. Because when you honor somebody, you are placing value on them. You are letting the world know that I value the person. And when you do that, it becomes a gate through which you enter into deep secrets. Number four, protege lesson. When you get around a mentor, be attentive, be observant, be curious about the mentor. It's so unfortunate, it's so sad, it's so wrong. That a lot of protégés go around their mentors to go and show off, to tell them all the great exploits that they've done. I've had people do that with me, and I pretend I didn't even hear it. And when they have told me about saving the whole world except for only one Eskimo, I ask them, how is your marriage? How are you doing with your devotional life, your work with God? Listen, one of the greatest keys to learning in this life is through the eye gate observation. When Jesus called those 12 apprentices to follow, he intentionally put them in places to observe him and learn. He said, follow me and I will make you. And one of them was a call to observation. So when you get around a mentor, and when I deal with the issue of how to work with a mentor, you find out that one of the greatest things is to open your eyes, close your mouth, and, and study. Open your eyes, close your mouth, and study. And whenever you have to open your mouth, is to ask intelligent questions. When they give you instructions, because, oh, I, I think you're going to, is it next week or so, when I deal with, are you a protege or a parasite? Oh, it's going to be hard. I, I'm going to ask all of you to get boxes of tissue. Because you're going to discover whether you are a protege or you're a parasite. Because a parasite only wants what the mentor has, but doesn't want the process by which the mentor got there. You will, be, you will be tested. Make sure you pass it. The penultimate one is you must protect the relationship. Protect the relationship. If you're a protege, please protect your relationship with your mentor. Be careful about name dropping. Be careful about unnecessarily quoting them. Be careful about using your mentor's name and his good word just to look good or to get out of some trouble or to justify your wrongs. Don't do that. I told you and I tell you again, mentors know a lot. And the danger to you is when they know and they won't say anything. I hope I'm helping you. And this is the final one. Be interested in your mentor's personal life. It's a relationship. And the relationship goes both ways. Don't be a protege who all you do is like a leech. You take, you take, you take, you take. No. Find ways to be interested in the mentor's life. Find ways to give to your mentor. Now, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I know there's a lot of abuses out there. So I'm not talking about you are not bribing your mentor. You are not buying his favor because last week I had people ask all these questions when Brian was here that I gave so much. I told you I had to tell that person that he was being stupid. You can't just buy favors like that. You can't buy attention. You are not you are not paying rent for somebody's space in your life. No. Just be around sometimes in your mentor's life. When they're having meetings, you attend. It's very important that you get that. Please hear me. Protege. When your mentor has meetings, go there and sit down. There are a lot of things I've learned over these past few weeks, past few days. That have informed a lot of things in my life. We'll talk about that later. But it's an investment. Next week, I'll talk to you about the principle of protocol. Listen, I'm bringing up Pastor Asma, but before I bring him up here, I want to say something. If you want to partner with us, you know, I told you about our projects and things, please send us an email at partner at advancedlife.org. It's right there on your street, on your on your screen. I beg your pardon. Just email us to be a partner. 
Some of you have started receiving some notes from us. There are a whole lot of things that we are going to give to you, a whole lot of relations that we are going to have. So let's do that. Partner at advancedlife.org. And please, Rampi Nanaya from Ottawa, Canada. Nanaya, God bless you so much. I haven't, I haven't seen you in a long time. ISI is coming up. You better show up or you are in trouble. Pious entry boy, Siaku, man of God. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's very important. Mary, Mary, sweet. God bless you so much. Uh, Amanda, sound away from La Côte d'Ivoire, Bijan. God bless you so much. And listen, ISI is coming up. ISI is coming up. Yeah, it's up there on your screen again. 20th through the 24th. Please, those who, who are members of the Society of LastMinute.com, today hand over your membership cards. And let's do something very amazing. Please go to Advanced Life and register. Register yourself, register your associates, register your members, and especially register your youth. Saturday morning, Youth on Fire with Zenzo Matoga. Dr. Mentor is coming, bless us. Sam Chan, can you imagine? Mm. Awesome is going to be. So please, let's do that. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to welcome onto our platform one of my mentors, my son in the Lord, all the way from Elizabeth, New Jersey, All Nations Church, the one and only Reverend Joseph Asma. Wow. Asma, welcome to Thank Tuesdays you. with the Ambassador of Hope. It's so good Thank to have you here today. How have you been, sir? I've been well. Thank you so much. What an honor to be here. Thank, Thank you, you so Thank much. you. Thank you. Family doing well? Family is doing well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How about you? Blessed be God. How, Blessed be God. How about you, Daddy? How are you? The, the, the old boy is doing good. The old boy is, you can tell the old boy is doing good. Listen, I know that you have you have some questions for me that you want us to look at. So in the next 10, 15 minutes, this is going to be a blessing to a whole lot of listen. Don't 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 kill off, don't go off. Listen, many times your 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 breakthroughs are in questions that are asked. Remember one time I talked to you about questions. No, when divinity is asking humanity questions, it's for a reason. Questions draw things out of people. Jesus taught a lot out of result of questions. So, Pastor Asma, we are here today, and thank you for your life. And so, I'm ready to field your easy questions. What have you got for us today? <laughs> thank you so much, Daddy, for having me. First of all, let me say what a privilege. Guys, this is a whole life university for free. This is an education um, that we are receiving um, and life resources, information, knowledge, wisdom that is open for us for free. And I want to say thank you, Daddy, for doing this Ambassador of Hope on Tuesdays. And guys, if you haven't shared it, uh, it's a sin. <laughs> Please share it, share it to us. Can, can everybody share to just some five people right now? Please yeah. share right now. Share, share, share. Just go to the share thing and share. Share before Pastor Asma asks his first question. Please share. Wherever you are, from Canada, from all the states from sea to shining sea, United States, from Europe, from United Kingdom, from the Brexit, from the Brexit, everywhere. Please share Africa, Australia, wherever. Please, can you can you share right now? I want to see. I'm just checking to see whether you obeyed me. Let's share. <coughs> you know somebody. You know somebody. You know some some somebody's. Please say. I can see some of you are sharing. God richly bless you. Share it to five people right now. Can we do it right now? Denzel is sharing to five people. Let's do it. Look, look, Babui. God richly bless you. Please share. Thank you. Deborah is sharing. Deborah Peters is sharing. Nana Kuredu Brefu. Come on, let's do that. Share, 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 share. I can see that. Share. Force them. Threaten them. Something. Papa Sasma, let's roll. Let's go. Yes, Daddy. Thank you. And before my first question, I want to say that listening to you, the characteristics of a mentor and all the expectations from a mentor to a mentee. I want to say, guys, I have lived to see that from Pastor Frank as my mentor. He's my mentor. He's my spiritual father. By the way, I have only one, like he said, and he's the one. He's my father. He's my mentor. And all the characteristics, all the things that he pointed out are the things that have made me who I am. And I am standing on his shoulder, like say, Isaac Newton said, if I can look far, it is because I'm standing on the shoulders of those who have gone ahead. So I want you to know that these are practical lessons. And if you want to see how practical this is, I can be an example to you of a mentor, mentee, mentor, protege relationship and how it helps 
that mentee look into or transition like daddy said moving him from one level into another level all right so let me having said that ask some personal questions that i know you would want to hear from daddy so these are very personal and i'm asking this for every one of us every one of us so daddy after serving your life after living your full life 65 years you look this good with a swag after living all these good lives what do you sincerely want to be remembered for Whoa. Well, number one, I'm not about to die yet. Um, you say I've lived my full years, but you know, almost feel like you are writing my uh, biography, of, uh, uh, my, my my thing in my funeral thing. Not yet. Um, no, no, how many plus dying early is no one of them. I'm just kidding. But thank you. Um, I think I've led some. I've led some. I've done a few. What do I have to be remembered for? Um, I want to be remembered for the many people that. I help to become better human beings. Mm. Wow. The many people that I helped to become better human beings, that people will be able to say, I encountered him and I became a better human being. Wow. I encountered him and I became like Jesus. I encountered him and this is who I am today. Two mm. great things that people must know when you depart, you leave two things, inheritance and legacy. Inheritance is what you leave behind. Legacy is who you leave behind. Those uh -huh. two things matter to me. People must say that I became who I am because me and this man, our lives crossed. So that is all that I want to be remembered for one day. Wow. Wow. And I can see all of that encapsulated in the Ambassador of Hope um, brand that you have, that indeed you are an ambassador of hope and people can refer or reference you and say that, through him, we had hope. What a great, great, great quest, um, answer. And um, thank you for doing that. Let me, let me ask the second, que uh, this second question. Um, you talked about the mentor. You talked about the mentee, the expectations here and there. Daddy, do you ever feel like being, you, you, do you ever feel like being taken for granted by your proteges, your mentees, and even your colleagues? You know, <laughs> do you ever feel like uh, people take you for granted? <sighs> uh, it is every day every day every day wow um the, the, the thing about this is that human beings are human beings and human beings will be human beings and people have all kinds of agendas and things i i i want to believe that a lot of people do these things not deliberately but some do uh -huh. but you, yeah you feel it that is why for me one of the things that i try to do to insulate myself is to have very low expectations when it comes to the issues of people not taking me for granted. Mm. Because people are people. I've been doing this leadership thing for about 40 years of my life. So I think I've mm. seen a few and I've noticed a few. And if you sit down to begin to think and recollect about all these things, if you're not careful, you're going to be better. Yes, we get taken for granted every day. You realize people get what they want and they forget about you. Uh, people use what they want to use, they forget about. It's a fact. I mean, I don't like talking about this, but since you asked me, I have to answer. It's a fact. Yeah. People do it. Uh, people won't stop doing it. The last person who did it to me is not the last person who do it to me. But at the end of the right. day, I do this all to the glory of Almighty God. Um, if I heal 10 lepers, chances are that maybe one leper will remember and come back and say thank you. So yes, I feel it. Uh, and especially in this generation, it's a lot. It's a lot. Yes. Yes. Wow. What great wisdom. I, I hope you guys are making notes and um, learning from this. What, what a great, great wisdom. You know, what do you do with it? Uh, people will always be people. Great answer, Daddy. L let me ask this about the Ambassador of Hope brand, the vision of Ambassador of Hope. And um, uh, by the way, 53 episodes, 53 times you have given your life, your time, your resources, devoted yourself to this, the commitment alone. And these are some of the things that challenge me. Never to sit down whilst my mentor and father is standing. Never to go to sleep when he's on the road walking. It is what keeps me going, the vision, the consistency that you have. Now, let me ask. So the Ambassador of Hope brand, the Ambassador of Hope, uh, Hope has now become a household name. When you look at the vision, what do you see? Now we are not writing you off. You are living on and you're going to live on. <laughs> and so is there anything one can do to secure the longevity of this vision of ambassador of hope 
Yes, the carpenter from Galilee, he took 12 men with dubious credentials and sold a vision to them that I want to capture the whole world. Oh. I'm sure nobody believed him. I'm sure even those guys never believed him. Until his movement has become worldwide, then billions of people rise up every day to join that movement called Christianity. Oh. What I desire about this vision is that the dream won't die. The dream oh. of me, one day I may go, but oh. the dream won't die. Oh. And how would it not die? It has to live through other people that I am pouring my life into. In uh -huh. one verse, in only one verse of scripture, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, only one verse, only one uh -huh. sentence, Paul deals with four generations. I think it's in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2 or so. Yes, uh -huh. it's right on yours. It says, the things that you have heard from me, me and you, you, you see that, the things that you have heard from me, so one to you, amongst many witnesses, commit these two faithful men, number three, who will also be able to teach others for generations. Wow. The things that you have heard from me, so you heard from me, commit right. to other men who will also teach other people. Longevity. So my prayer is that somebody who is connected to me will catch this vision, will take mm. this ambassador of hope and not let it die after I'm gone. Mm. Because wow. at the end of the day, when Joseph was seen by his brothers, they said, here comes a dreamer. Let's mm. kill him. Let's put mm. him in a pit and say some animal killed him. And listen to what he said. And we shall see what will happen to his dreams. So Joseph's greatest thing was not the coat. It was his dreams that they went wow. after. So I say that the dreamer may die, but don't let the dream die. So I pray that somebody will capture this. A lot of somebodies will capture. Because whatever it is, human needs are the same. Whether you live in a gated community or you live in a, 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 the gate of a, a jailhouse, human needs uh. are all the same. Human misery has no distinction, has no color. Human misery is everywhere. The rich are miserable, the poor are miserable. Everybody has their challenges. Hope, uh. hope planted in Christ is what the world needs. Don't let wow. that voice die. Wow. Guys, I'm, I don't know if you, you get this. This is so loaded. This is a tank full of wisdom. And I want you to hashtag this right now. If you can, all of us, hashtag the dream won't die. Hashtag it right now. Right now. I want to see that drop in the message box in the chat room. The dream won't die. Let's do that. And all of us here gathered in this room are going to be carriers of this dream. The ambassador of hope dream. The vision is going to live through us. So hashtag it. Hashtag it right now. The dream won't die. Wow, wow. Great wisdom. Thank you, Daddy, for opening yourself up. Can I ask another personal question? Yes, sir. <laughs> does, does Pastor Frank Ofuswapia has any fears? Hmm. Fears. Fears. <laughs> I want to, <laughs> with all humility, I want to see myself as a man who doesn't deal with fear a lot. Mm. It was one of the great presidents of this nation who said the only thing to fear is fear itself. But right. if I have any fear, my fear will be that I don't become a disappointment uh. to those who look up to me. Uh. Every Sunday when I have stood in church, you know, you know my church inside out, you know my office complex inside out, you know all the rooms everywhere. I know right. that the huge mirror that the right one that overlooks the car park right from the street when people are driving in by their hundreds to almost feel like i have fear that all mm. these people are coming here to listen to me to watch me to observe me to need help i dare not i dare not mm become a bad representative of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. That is my biggest fear. I don't want to be wow. a disappointment. That's I it. dare not. I dare not. I dare not become a disappointment of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I adapt that fear. I take that fear as well. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Daddy, so if you woke up tomorrow morning and the world has changed or something great has happened to the world and you were given the initiative 
or you were given the power to initiate that change, what would you want to see? Hmm. Change. Oh, ah, this is a huge one. I don't think God Himself would even take this thing easy at all. That's a huge <laughs> one. If I were Bruce Almighty, maybe I could. But to initiate change in this world, um, maybe my change, my change will be number one: change hearts and uh. start by letting people know that. It is not, it doesn't take too much to be nice mm. to people who are suffering. And so when we stop for the underdog, when we speak up for the underdog, when we help the downtrodden, when we give a, a hand out to those who are suffering, we can begin to build a good movement on this earth to make it a better place for everybody. Not mm. everybody is going to become a millionaire before they die. Right. Not everybody's going to get seven degrees after their name before they die. But maybe I impress upon people who are more privileged to help the less privileged to make this wow. world a happy place. Wow. Maybe that's my thing. Wow. I hope, I hope you guys are following through this. By the way, uh, let your comments come. If you didn't share, share. It's still not too late. Great, great wisdom, great time, and thank you, Daddy, for personally, you know, letting me share in this in this platform with you to ask you these life-changing questions. I've worked with you. I have learned from you. I call myself a true copycat of the ambassador of hope. <laughs> you know, I'm not a fool to try to reinvent the wheel. No, I step in the shoes because I've seen how successful you've become. And I thank you for allowing me to, to walk in, in, in those paths and learn from you. But one of the things that I've observed about you is that you see a lot. You know a lot. You know, I, I've come close to you. I've sat down with you. I've listened to you. You know so much. You see so much. But you will never say a thing until, until it is warranted, until the appropriate time. And sometimes I wonder what is going on in his head. Can you talk about that discipline, that discipline, that, you know, the ability to, to hold your emotions as a leader, um, emotional intelligence, to know when to speak and when to be quiet as a leader? Yeah, it's, 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 an, it's, it's part of the art of leadership is for me, it's part of my makeup, my discipline about dealing with people. And I realize that Words are powerful. Words are destiny defining. Words hurt. Words heal. Words build. Word, words tear down. Mm. And in the light of that, I consider my words as very precious because the Bible even talks about the fact that words are precious even more than diamonds. And so and I realized over the years that there are people that when they tend to hear your voice too much, they denigrate your voice and they put it down. So as a leader, mm. I've learned to make sure that I don't cast my pearls before swine. Wow. And I only speak when it's absolutely necessary to speak. Mm. Somebody picked up the, an argument, tried to pick up an argument. Man, you and I know that trying to pick up argument with me is just a waste of time. It and is. When I, I'm, I'm saying this by experience. I'm talking out of experience. And when they finished, I said to the young man, you are talking out of experience. But for me, out of experience, I don't talk. Mm. I make sure that my words, once they leave my mouth, they go to create something good in the life of people. And there are other people that I keep quiet because I realize that, listen, nobody's going to promote you beyond the last step of obedience that you took. Mm. Whatever I said to you yesterday, if you haven't done it, don't expect me to say a new thing today. Wow. And I think I say a lot during my preaching for people to take it and make a success out of their lives. That doesn't warrant me to talk a lot. And then by nature, Pastor Asma, by nature, you and I know that beyond the microphone, I don't talk much. Yeah. That is why I have my discipline. So these are some of the things that I realized. And human nature, I said that you keep talking, talking, talking. The things that you say don't do, that's what they do. So sometimes you have to go and learn the hard way. So that is the deal. Wow. Guys, I hope you heard this. You talk only when it is absolutely necessary. And I've learned that from you, Daddy. Thank you for mentoring me in that regard and in many more. I know our time is almost up. Can I ask two more questions? Just two quick ones. Two quick ones. We are done. Two, two quick more ones. questions. Don't sleep yet. Two more questions and we are done. <laughs> two, quick, two quick questions. The, the first question is, so Daddy, what keeps you up at night? 
and what wakes you up in the morning? I mean, what is it that wants? <laughs> because there are people who work and they wake up and like, oh God, another day, another day. But what keeps you up and what wakes you up? What is the excitement? What is the motivation? What keeps me up at night is people. The desire mm. to see people become better people. The desire for people's problems to be solved. The, the desire for people to have solutions. The desire to make this world a better place. The desire to to make full proof of the ministry that God has given to me. That is what keeps me awake. And that is the uh -huh. same thing that keeps me up every morning. You and I, you are very close to me and you know, sometimes I may not be in the best of shapes, but something drives me uh, because uh -huh. of human misery. Something drives me because I want the people to become better. Something drives me because I want to give what is on the inside of me to people who may never be able to reach me. And so these uh -huh. are the things that keep me awake. These are the things that wake me up at, in the morning. Wow, great, great, great lessons. Thank you, Daddy. And I've seen it. I, I'm a witness of how you would get up, you know, even when, you know, being close to you, days that you are not well, days that we know that you're in pain. When you sit at the table, we know that Daddy is in pain. But the next moment, you are behind the pulpit, and it is as if, wait, is he the same person that we were just sitting with in so much pain, and you carry it with so much grace. And for that, we say thank you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for opening yourself up to us like a magazine in the train. We all pick it up and we are reading you. You are an open page for us, and we say thank you. Maybe the last words that you want to tell us. So now, as your protégés, as your mentees, you've shared so much in this lesson already. Just maybe two things you want to say. What is in your heart for us? What is your expectation of us? as protégés and mentees. Two things you asked me, number one, anybody listening to me as a protégé, mentee, son, daughter, whatever, you are ready to take over to do what God has put in your heart to do. Mm. Don't wait forever. There's no point in us asking you to come to the rehearsal every time and then giving you an opportunity at the recital. Do that. And the second thing is, after the baton is given to you, don't keep it. Don't drop it. Let the cycle continue until Jesus comes. I wow. The you did drop it. You did drop it. We have taken it. We won't let it drop. We're taking over and we're going to run with it. And generations after us will run with this button. Guys, I hope you have learned so much. Thank you, Daddy, again for giving us this blessed uh, um, opportunity to share in this inviting us into your bedroom, into your living room, and giving us a father's wisdom. This is very intimate. This is very close. And we want you to know that we treasure these hours with us. Our lives have changed. My life, I know, has changed. And I know many lives have been impacted. And for that, we say thank you. If you've listened to Daddy tonight, please carry on this baton. Share this. Don't let it end here. There are many that could log on now but can hear this and share this later. Let's carry on this legacy and let it live on. Thank you, Ambassador of Hope, for having me. My honor. Thank you, Pastor Asma. Thank you so much. And for all our friends and partners, thank you again. Please listen again if you want to partner with us. Like I told you, you know, we're building a leadership institute in Africa to help leaders, not just church leaders, polit political leaders, tribal leaders, whatever leaders, 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 business people. And so help us just send us an email and just tell us, I want to be a partner. You know, it's nothing huge that we demand out of you. In fact, we will give you more than you may give to us. So partner at Advanced Life. And then I want to remind you about ISI 2022, our flagship conference that is coming up July 20th to the 24th. You know, every year, this is our 18th year. It's huge. We have Senzo Matoga, Mesa Otabel, Sunshine, Francis Miles, and of course, your ambassador of Franco Voswapia. There's going to be morning sessions, afternoon sessions, and evening sessions, but registration is required please take time off and invest in yourself sometimes the greatest investment all the time the greatest investment you can ever make is to invest in yourself set some time off just three days wednesday night thursday all day friday all day saturday morning then people can go but those that remain sunday morning is thanksgiving service and there are some messages out coming out for you about the ordered leader you want to be a leader that is in order you see, the whole situation that we find ourselves in today is not just somebody fighting a war in Europe, but it all started in the garden when a leader threw the whole equilibrium of the earth out of order. I'm talking about Adam. He was to dress it and to keep it and put it in order after the chaos. He returned it into a chaotic state, but Jesus came to bring order. It's going to be amazing. 
Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Please give me just two minutes of your time. Two minutes. Please don't go yet. Two minutes. It may make a difference. It may not make a difference. If you want to help us right now, if you want to give to us 60 seconds, you know me. My time starts now. I'm going to put the giving portals online for you. Please help us out. If you're on the Continental USA, Cash App, Zelle, their numbers are out there for you. 678-896-177. Can you surprise me today? Can you do? I want, I want my finance people to come and tell me that today people were so generous. Sometimes they laugh, you know, one person, two people. Let's not do that. Let's invest in something good. If you want to do PayPal, just go to Advanced Life and do a PayPal. If you are in Ghana, Nigeria, Ivory Coast, wherever, um, you can do Vodafone Cash. The number is 0248214472. And the name is Franco Fosuapia. I have 40 seconds left. Then the next one minute, I'm going to pray for you. And I'm going to send you on your way. God richly bless you. Please thank you, Pastor Alex Boate, Alive Church in London. God bless you so much, you and Jenny. I so much love you. Rejoice. God bless you. I hope you and the baby coming are doing very well. God richly bless you. Sibu, we love you. Tracy, we love you. Clifford, God bless you. Julia, giving him all the glory. My one and only preaching, Sultan Eunice Asma, Mami Esia, Uziwa, and Sa. Thank you so much. God bless you, Mami Nyamiche. You are such an amazing person. Constance, every year. God bless you. Nanefia, Susan Odum. Oh, I love you all. Bigger, bigger. God bless you so much. Thank you for coming up. Abnabeku. Yes, carry the baton. Run with the baton. Don't drop it. Mata Unina. Thank you too. God bless you. There, blessings upon you. A blessings upon you, Adelaide. God richly bless you. Their most reverend metal, Dolly. God richly bless you. Thank you so much. Then Zell, yes, we draw the mic. Eunice Maxwell. Eunice, God bless you. You know that you are such an amazing person. Listen, Dillis Mami Efwa Eni. God bless you. Read my lips. God bless you. Okay, now let's go. We are done. Thank you so much. Gozi, God bless you so much, Patricia and everybody. Thank you. Listen, all that remains for me to say is thank you for joining us today on the Ambassador of Hope. Um, if you have like prayer requests or something, just drop it out there at info at, at advancedlife.org. We'll be happy to pray with you. Um, I can't give you money, but um, I can be a prayer warrior for you. I can help you. I can give you wisdom when I have the time. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, I thank you for everybody who came online today. Thank you for the ears that heard, the eyes that saw. Thank you for the deposits of wisdom in people's hearts. I pray that the birds of this earth will not take away the seeds that have been sown. I pray that even the things that our stumbling, bumbling lips could not articulate well. The Holy Spirit, who is the master teacher, will open it up in the lives of people. I am praying for your preservation and your protection through this dark night. I pray that no enemy will bypass your defenses. Evil and tragedy will not visit you in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray that the angel of the Lord will encamp around you and show you the salvation of the Lord. God keep you secure. In the night, as you rest, may no organ malfunction, may no stroke attack you, may no trouble take you, may no paralysis take you. For those of you who are traveling, whether you fly, you drive, you walk, you ride, the eternal God be your refuge and the name be the everlasting earth. For the one who has come to that crossroads and you don't know what to do, I pray that the wisdom of God will give you guidance. For the one whose back is to the wall, you are in need, you are in trouble. I pray that Jehovah Jireh, the one who sees the need before you go there, may he show you that he is a God who supplies your needs according to his riches in glory. God keep you. God bless you. God secure you until we meet another day on Tuesday in the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. Agree with me and say amen. And all that remains for me to say, my name is Franco Fosuapia, your ambassador of hope. I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. I'll see you when I see you. Bye-bye.